Ryzen is hotter than a $2 pistol. But wait, AMD says it's not actually. The 1700X and the 1800X and presumably some of the Ryzen 5 chips. I don't know because those aren't out yet at the time of this video, but it probably still applies. Uh, what's going on? Why would AMD make the chip purposely report that it's 20 degrees C warmer than it actually is? Well, it's a quick video to explain why. It actually makes sense. All right, the first thing that we've got to do is go back to the AMD slides. The 1700X and the 1800X, 95 watt thermal design power parts. The 1700 is 65 watts. Now, interestingly, the 1700 actually does report the correct temperature, but not the 1700X or the 1800X. Why? Well, um, you could look at modern video cards for an explanation. If you look at modern video cards, the 1080 Ti, um, the Fury, the Fury X, a lot of those cards will run at higher temperatures. Um, Asus, you know, on, on a lot of their non-reference cards, they'll actually run the cards really hot with the fans turned off, and they've designed their cards to be able to deal with a huge amount of heat before the fans kick on. Now, when you start up a game, you know, it's gonna be two or three or four seconds from the time you get into the game till the time that you really need the, the graphics horsepower, the processing power. Well, that lag time is an eternity in CPU time. Remember from the AMD slides, AMD's talking about how their modern power management platform is sampling the platform a thousand times per second. Those sensors on the die, there's a bunch of them, and they're keeping an eye on temperature, power utilization, the whole nine yards, and they're really, really good at it. In fact, one of the first bugs in Ryzen um, was a bug with like FM3 instruction processing, and a certain sequence of instructions drew more power than the uh, Infinity Fabric was sort of designed to allow, and so they had to push out a microcode update for that specific scenario to allow more power through the fabric. I mean, when you're really thinking about it, Ryzen 7, is 95 watts and it goes toe to toe with 140 watt plus parts from Intel. That is a significant uh, difference in terms of like power delivery and heat production. So when you start to think about it in those terms, AMD reporting a higher temperature than you actually have uh, means that you've sort of got a unified temperature curve across all of their families. And they said that, but they didn't really explain what that means. So what it means is that when you're running a Ryzen 1700X or a Ryzen 1800X and it's got the extended frequency range and all of that, the CPU is already cool. The heatsink has cooled off. The, the heatsink is not running warmer than it would ordinarily be or running warmer than ambient like it is with a graphics card. And the reason for that is to give you more thermal headroom for those boosts so that it can boost to 4.1 gigahertz because at 4.1 gigahertz it is going to produce a significant amount of heat. Heat is the enemy of stability. Heat is the enemy of, you know, super, super long-lived electronics or super long-lived parts unless they're designed specifically for it. So it makes perfect sense to me that AMD would report temperatures that are higher because they want UEFIs and, and you know, the management firmware on motherboards to respond to the CPU like as if it is 20 degrees C hotter than it is, so that when the CPU does need to go into super heat production mode for those XFR boosts or, or whatever, that it actually works. Now in terms of reporting to the end user, we can just fix that in software. The software needs to be cognizant of, okay, this is an 1800X, I'm gonna report to the end user that you know this is the temperature that this is happening. But in terms of OEMs and people that are building motherboards and people that are putting stuff together, they don't have to think about it. They don't have to have a table in UEFI where it's like, okay, it's a 1700X, you know, 1700X wants to be this temperature, it's an 1800X wants to be this other temperature, it's a 1700X or a 1900X or something that hasn't come out yet, it needs to be this other temperature. It makes perfect sense that AMD would just say, this is our one fan profile. We want more aggressive cooling at the same temperatures on a 1700X and an 1800X. And this is the most pragmatic way to do it. So hopefully a light bulb has gone off and it's like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Now, as we speak, software is being updated to report the correct temperatures. But I think this was a really clever hack on AMD's part in order to avoid having to create more headache among OEMs and you know other headache in general. And yeah, you know, out the gate, the temperatures might not be reported to the end users, but why they did it makes sense. <laughs> if you have any comments or you want to tell me I'm horribly wrong and you work for AMD, because this is mostly just a guess, you can find me in the Level 1 forums. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.